Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to get our development area set up ready to complete the rest of the course. So first of all let's create a new directory somewhere convenient. We can call it Jasmine Course. I'm just going to set mine up on the desktop. Inside this folder we can then create two new folders. We call the first one Dev and we can call the second one Test. So once that's done, we'll need to download a copy of Jasmine itself. And we can get that from GitHub. And over at the right hand side here, if you just want to hit this download zip button, that will download all of the Jasmine files in a zip file. So once that's downloaded, that will give you this archive. And if we just go into the Jasmine master folder and then into the dist folder, then we can see there are all of the different versions of Jasmine. We want the latest one. So let's just drag that out here, close that down. And then if we go into this archive, these are the working files for running Jasmine standalone. And we've got a couple of different folders and some files here. As you can see, there's a license file and there's also a file called specrunner.html. So we have a lib folder here as well. And if we go into this, it has all of the files that Jasmine itself needs to run. And there's also a spec folder. If we go into here, there's a couple of example spec files. And if we go into the SRC folder, we've got a couple of example SRC files as well. So what we want to do first of all is to grab the lib folder here. And we'll just copy that into our test folder. And we can also copy in the spec runner file and we can create a new folder in here as well. And we'll call this one spec. And this is where our test files will go. So let's just have a look at the example files. What we'll need to do is just extract all of these. And I'll just create a temporary folder. Okay, so let's run the specrunner.html file in a browser. And this is the default spec runner. So on the page, you can see a report of all of the tests. So there are a couple of example source files that we saw and a couple of example spec files. And those spec files contain all of these tests. So you can see that all of the tests are passing at the moment. And if we just want to run one of the tests, we can click on that and it will just run a single test for us. So this is how spec runner looks. Let's just close that down and get rid of the temp folder now and we'll get rid of this archive. Okay, so now we need to get a copy of require.js ready to use and we can get this from the require website and that is at requirejs.org. And you just wanna download the latest release. We just want requirejs, we don't need the optimizer. So let's just go into our dev folder now and we can create a new folder in here as well. And we'll call this one lib. And once the archive for requirejs is downloaded, you just want to go into it and find the require.js script file. And we'll copy that straight into the lib folder here. And let's create another new folder. And we'll call this one scripts. And this is where the source files that we'll create during the course will be stored. So let's get the shell of a simple require.js module set up and ready for us to develop. So let's just open up a code editor. So let's create a new JavaScript file in our scripts folder. The module we'll create will be for working with numbers and doing various numerical things like adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing. So let's call the file numbers.js. As it's a require module, we should wrap the whole thing in a define block, which defines the module. Um, we'll just make sure that the file is lintable with JS lint. So we'll just define the globals. And what we want to do in here is just create a new object. We'll call it self. And then at the end of the module, we can just return this object. 
And for now, let's just add a console.log. So for now, it's just a very basic module. It just returns an empty object. And we also need a little bootstrapper file that will load one or more of our modules. We only have one module at this point, but we might add some more later on. So let's create another new JavaScript file, also in the scripts folder, and we'll call this one main.js. And we also want to make sure that this file is lintable, so let's just specify the globals. And this time, instead of using the define method, we're going to use the require method instead. And this method should take an array which specifies which of our modules we want to load. And we've only got one module, so we just need to specify numbers. So require.js will assume that that's a script file, and it will assume that the script file is in the same directory as the main.js file. So we don't need to say numbers.js, we just need to say numbers. So while this course isn't about require.js, it's very, very straightforward to use. There are plenty of great tutorials out there. So check out some of the other tutorials on Tuts Plus if you've never used require.js before. So now all we need is a test HTML page that uses the bootstrapper to load our module. So in the root of the dev folder, let's create a new HTML page and we can just call this one index.html. So we need to reference the require.js source file, but the rest of our code we want to load by require so that our modules can be loaded asynchronously, which is what the A in AMD stands for, of course. So we can use a special data main attribute to tell require what our bootstrapper file is called. So at this point, we should be able to run the index page in a browser and in the console, we should see the message from our module. So let's just check that that is the case. And I've put the index in the wrong place. So let's just move that quickly. That wants to go into dev. Great. Okay, so let's run this in our browser now. And if we open up the console, then we see the log, which is actually spelt incorrectly. Wonderful, but at least everything's working correctly. Let's just fix that. Okay, so one more thing that we'll need is the latest Java development kit, as we'll need to be able to run Java from the command line. So we can get this from the Oracle website. It's available here. So once that's downloaded, if you just run the installer and get it installed, that should be all that you need to do. There's no configuration that's required. And lastly, we'll also need phantom.js. So we can get that from the phantomjs.org website. So download the latest version. At the moment, you can see it's version 1.9. Once that's downloaded, what you want to do is unpack the zip file somewhere accessible. So I've put mine on the root of my C drive. And then we just need to add the path to the folder where you just unpacked it to, to your system path. So once that's done, we should then be able to open up a command prompt and enter phantom.js, and it will load the executable. So you should be able to do something like this. And as long as it doesn't say phantom.js is an unrecognized command, it means that everything's installed correctly. So in this lesson, we set up our working directory and put some of the various scripts that we'll be using, such as require.js and Jasmine itself into the places that they need to be. We also created a basic module shell and got it running in a test page. And we saw what Jasmine's default HTML reporter looks like and how tests look when they pass and that kind of thing. In the next lesson, we'll see how to create test suites with the describe method. Thanks for watching.